what does that say? 76%, okay, that's not too, you don't know, I was looking at my screen. I had to unplug my camera charger so that I could charge this remote control shark. Normal things, people in their 30s do. And I forgot to plug my pack in that charges the camera battery, so I started to film this morning and just said battery exhausted. I'm like, well, that's weird. Because I pulled it right out of the charger, then I remembered, oh yeah, I was charging my pool toy. Luckily, I had spare batteries, so that's all good news. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, and nice and toasty outside, feeling like summer. Still some construction noise going on. Just gonna film through it this week. It's not too bad, so I think that it's uh, something we can probably live with. Turbo found a nice big boot that I pulled off of the Queen Palm. He has a great memory. Last night I was out here cleaning up the trunk on here. There were a few loose straps, bases of old fronds or what they are, and I was pulling them off because I wanted to expose some more trunk, get some rings going. And he remembered where I threw him. I didn't expect him to do that. I thought that I had hid them fairly well from him because he kind of tends to make a mess when he gets a hold of these things. But I figure if he remembered all night long where I had left that and then ran straight to it this morning, then I should let him enjoy it. Just a little while, because good for him, good for his brain. Here's what I'm working on or about to be working on. I want to get this done before the sun gets over into this area. I talked in the garden tour about how I screwed up and I planted a whole bunch of sun impatiens where I wasn't supposed to be planting them. They should be about a foot down on the slope. It's hard to tell there's a slope there, but there is probably a good 20 to 30 inch slope. This goes up fairly high here. I wanted those down lower because I wanted to do heliconias behind the sun impatiens. So I need to I gotta move them all. Not really a big deal. Also, there appears to be some sort of broccoli growing over here. That's fun. Something in the broccoli family. It's not broccoli. I don't know. I throw food scraps out here in the winter time, and sometimes things that look like weeds start to pop up, and I just let them do their thing until I figure out what they are, and that's how I arrived here. If they end up looking like some kind of obnoxious weed that I wouldn't want around, then I'll cut the flowers off and dig it up, get the plant out, but I don't I don't know. I'll rip it out. It's going to have to go. So that's what's going on here. I'm going to grab the tripod. Where should I start with this? I should probably... Well, there's only one place to start. I have to dig the new holes first. Acting like there's something mysterious about this. You know what you got to do to plant things. Also, have a lot of fun new plants over here. You know, made a big dent in all the annuals that need to be planted last week, so I figured I should probably go out and buy some more. I need to get these pool planters plant it up so I have some fun things to go into those. Some things I'd like to move around and change with some of the other planters and overall I just I want to finish tucking the annuals into the containers so that next week I can get on with getting some perennials in the ground and working on getting the drip set up because I'm tired of watering. Oh my gosh, I spend so much time out here watering. In theory, there's no reason that this should take, I don't know why I turned the camera on then I started walking away from it to go to the other side of the table. That doesn't make any sense. I say that I want to get that area planted up before the sun gets on it, which is gonna be in like probably 20 or 30 minutes. So I'm seeing that more of a challenge to see how quickly I can pull this off. Since those impatience have only been in the ground for, I don't know, two, three weeks. Moving them shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's a setback, but not the end of the world. They're already nice, big, established plants, so I'm not gonna be, hopefully, setting things back too much. Should I? I should probably go ahead and cut that out now, shouldn't I? Yeah, I guess so. The auger for the impatience, and these should just pull up. Yeah, that is easy. Okay, and this right here, I don't, I don't know what this is. It started growing last year and I thought maybe it was a leftover from the Ruyas. But now that it's gotten bigger, I can look at it and tell that it clearly is not. That's not what it is. It's definitely not a Ruya. It's some kind of woody perennial, some sort of tree, I'm guessing. Whatever it is, it can't stay here. Hey, found a whole bunch of drip lines in the ground. Was it's, it's way too loud. Just forget it. I'd much, we don't need to talk right now. I dug the holes slightly larger this time since I'm going to be lifting a larger root ball hopefully into them. I'm thinking before I do this, I need to find some stakes and get this, pardon the umbrella, 
get the, um, uh, who are you? What is this? The Temple Bloom, Heptacodium. It's in my face. I need to move it. No, no, no. Stay on task. Get this done. Sprinkle in some uh, fertilizer. Help get those roots going. Nice and strong. Broad spectrum slow release. That was a lot. That was a lot. That's okay, though. They're impatient. They can take it. It's not super strong. Yeah, you see how the heptacodium, it needs some pruning and it's hanging down inside everything. I need to get that staked up properly so that it's, but we can talk about that later. I'm really having trouble staying focused this morning. Yeah, see? So these have rooted out some, which is great, but not so much that I'm gonna be tearing them up a lot by moving them. This is gonna be much better for them in the long run because they're going to get more sun down here closer to the front of the slope. I just did a bunch of talking. I don't know if y'all could see what was actually in frame because I zoomed in. I'm gonna go ahead and just lift these up, move them down, and then start digging holes for heliconias. Huh? What do we think? I know. Not a huge difference. Probably not all that exciting. I haven't backfilled them yet either. I need to do that. All right, I'm gonna find my shovel, dig some holes. I think I'm just gonna cut back to this because I really do want to get done before the sun's in this corner. What do you have? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but take it out of your mouth. Just a stick. And noise. It's very noisy. Okay, very brief reprieve from the machinery noise. Here's where I am. I dug up this area. I have a Chinese fan palm that I want in this corner, but I was thinking I would probably need to start the heliconias right in this spot. And then uh, they'll have to be staggered over here. I can't have them in front of this ginger because when this ginger gets another foot or probably two or three feet taller, it leans forward. So anything that's planted right there directly in front of them, it's just, it's going to get shaded out. What I'm wondering here though, is if I have room to squeeze a heliconia into this corner and a Chinese fan. I'm going to try. I don't, don't, don't think it's a great idea, but I'm going to give it a shot. I had added all that fun stuff down into that hole like some clumps of clay work their way back down in there which is fine that's just the way things go when you're planting on a slope that fertilizer and everything will still work its way in there once i get to watering let's make a little bit of a crevice there if i do the chinese fan palm i'm going to need to come out to like right in here so why did i put this i don't know I don't know what's happening with my brain right now. One thing at a time, working my way through this by priority of what I really want over here. My main priority of what I want is a heliconia right here. A Chinese fan palm would be second. Is this lined up properly with that slope? I think so. I think that's good. Yep, that's cute. That's real cute. I like that there. It's fun little heliconia flowers. Now the question, do I dig this out and try and squeeze the Chinese fan palm in there. If I dig it out too much, then I'm gonna lose some of my planting space that I'm using for this at an idiot, but I really want it here too. I don't have a ton of time to think about this losing shade, so I think I'm just gonna give it a shot and see what happens. Don't like it here, can always move it, right? I don't, the garden's getting so full, I don't really know where to put everything I'm digging up. I'm trying to get the gravel to stay on the edge because that is important for the drainage in the garden. Clumps of clay are going back here with the gingers. You know, in hindsight, this really needed to be done anyways because this is all supposed to be gravel in the very front and it's started to fill in with dirt and sand over the years. So this is just, uh, no, I tried to make it make sense in my head. It doesn't. I'm planting something where I shouldn't be. This is supposed to be a drainage spot, but you know, whatever. Chip away at those sides. Make sure it's plenty deep. I don't anticipate the Chinese fan palm living through the winter, but I don't know, maybe I'll throw some mulch over it. It can freeze and come back for you if you mulch them very, very heavily. Let's take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this little Chinese fan palm is. It's very nice. I mean, it's got some issues <laughs> in the foliage for sure, but look at the little trunks that are going on there. It's nice to see. When you get them in these 10 inch containers, it's not uncommon for them to just be lots of stringy strap leaves. So whenever I see them in these pots with some nice little trunks on them and actual nice looking fan leaves, that's when I like to jump on them. They are spiky. This is being surprisingly stubborn. I can feel that the pot's not tight on there, but it does not want to come off. Also just notice my microphone's upside down. Day went by a thread. Sure, my audio has been just fantastic for everybody, hasn't it? Okay, got that pointed back up at my face. Say that that planting depth is about perfect. 
Yeah, the Heliconia is uphill from that just a little bit, not by a lot, but enough that I'm not concerned about that fan palm smothering it out. And I can always prune out any leaves if it looks like there's not enough airflow in that spot. This is good. This is off to a nice start. I'm going to go ahead and pop the rest of the heliconias in and maybe throw a ginger in the corner and come back and have a look at it. Uh, what do we think? I know it would look better if things were still shady, but the noise, it just, it got out of control. I had to wait for them to go to lunch to do a final reveal to get their recaps. Y'all already know I pulled the plants forward. Maybe took them too far. I forgot. I, I haven't dug this ditch out. I don't know what I'm talking about. Every spring I come through here and I dig out a drainage ditch right here in the front and it has gravel in it and that's where the water collects goes into a French drain and goes out of the yard. I, for I forgot to do it. So I thought that there was a lot more space here than there actually was. I went through and started Kicking back the rock, you can kind of see the dirt outline from where I was trying to clean that line up and realize that I have these very close to the edge, but it's fine. Didn't really have a choice, so it's just the way it has to be. I popped a nanook right there, one right here in between these sun patients, and then another one down over where? Where is it? On the camera. Over there. Alpinia Zaremba Vergata and that corner. I did that years ago, loved how it looked, and uh, don't know why I haven't done it since. They do well in the spot. They get nice morning sun and then shade in the afternoon. Well, they when I have them tucked back a little bit further, they do. Heliconias. Y'all saw the one that I planted down here by the Adenidia palm, then did one more right here, another one just over from it. Tried to space them fairly evenly as, evenly as I could, considering this all grows up and down and in and out as far as elevation is concerned. These garden beds were built to look like sand dunes years, many, many, many years ago, and that looked really cool at the time. Now, I'm kind of regretting it, but it's all right. Once the annuals fill in, you really can't tell if there's a change in elevation on camera. I don't think you even noticed it anyways. I had originally wanted this to have heliconias all the way across this back area, but practically that just didn't make any sense. As I mentioned, these gingers that are over here, that's these green right here. Those are a type of ginger that get fairly tall, like seven feet tall. They're just going to shade whatever's planted in front of them. So if I put a heliconia there, wouldn't end up seeing it because they shade it and they lean forward. And a similar situation over here because I have this hibiscus right here of Machotos, which is the, what is this? It's a candy crush. One of the summerific hibiscuses. I was going to move that, but then I thought, well, maybe if I get this, I keep on calling it Lespedeza. That's not what it is. The Heptacodium, the Temple of Bloom, tall plant behind it. If I get that staked back, then uh, that will allow more light in. And it did allow a lot more light in. The Heptacodium got very top heavy. It's not that it was reaching for the sun. It's just a lot of growth was coming out from in there. So I staked up the main branches, pulled them back. I want this to grow with a nice V vase shape to it. And uh, I would regret not correcting <laughs> its growth at a young age. I think I'm also going to come in and clean out all of the smaller limbs and any limbs that are coming off with tree pruning generally, anything that's about two thirds the size of your main stems and trunks down lower want to get those out of there. want all that energy to go to the main trunks and growing new foliage up top. No reason to support other branches that are almost the same size as the trunk when you need to be supporting the main trunk. I just, I think I said all that already, didn't I? These bananas will grow up. They're going to shade things right here. That heptacodium, I'll give that a prune so it won't shade things quite as much. That's why I figure the alpinia should be good right here, even though it's a little bit further forward than I would normally plant it. I can't plant it further back because there's a sable miner, a little dwarf palmetto back there, a dwarf fan palm in the back corner. <laughs> Losing my words here. So we're going to see how the summerific uh, hibiscus does here. I think it'll be okay. Time will tell. It did okay last year, but it was also its first year in the ground. So you know how these plants go. You plant them, they don't do much for the first year. They sort of sit there, they'll bloom with whatever they have on them. And the next year they go boom. And that's when you get a nice explosion of growth on them. So it should get big enough where it'll be able to reach up and get the light. And I think we'll be uh, maybe not done blooming, but it should be in its prime of blooming by the time these gingers get too big and start maybe causing some shading issues from when the sun's over there. Further away, that part of the day. I think that's like later afternoon towards evening. And then to finish the area off, I planted up the base of this Adenidia palm. I put a Limezinger xanthosoma here in the front 
and just a couple sun impatiens on each side in the back. Uh, this root ball that's in here, pretty hefty. So there just wasn't room to put much else in here. I don't really think that I needed to either. If I start to get bugged by it being too open and bare, I can like throw some seeds in for some lobularia or something to fill all that in and cover it up. But, but that shouldn't be something that is a problem because once the Xanthosoma, the Lime Zinger starts taking off, that'll fill in this spot. The Sun Impatiens will fill out 24 by 24 at least. I'm pretty sure they're the compact variety, so I wouldn't expect them to much more than that. And, oh, that's, I just remember why I zoomed in. I back the container with a really rich blend of soils, just an all-purpose potting mix with a good amount of cotton burr, compost, sand, earthworm castings, that rose feed that has the higher levels of phosphorus in it to help with establishing some root growth, palm gain, and uh, some bark chunks and sand. Did I say sand? I don't know. Always some room around the edge of the pot where there's missing soil from these being on a truck and then being moved around by the crane so get to backfill that and actually I kind of like that because it's nice that I can give the plants some fresh soil every year without having to repot it and it needs it because this is a scraggly looking Edenidia palm. It's not one of the prettiest. It has a very odd crown shaft on it. It's very discolored. It was like that last year too. I'm not sure what that's about. So that was why I wanted to make sure that it was a really nice rich blend with plenty of that palm gain in there to get it growing and you may notice that I top dress the container with mulch. I don't do that very often, but there's a hefty slope here from where this root ball has lifted itself up and the bottom of the pot. So anytime you water, it's going to flush out all that nice soil that I just put in there to top dress and pack around the sides. That's just going to help get the soil to wash down into the root ball where I want it to go as opposed to flying over the edge of the containers overall. Very happy with how this came out. Still some mess to clean up, but it's an improvement. The heliconias will spread some, not much, but some. I didn't end up doing a row of them all the way across like I'd wanted to. I just think it would have been dumb to plant one right in front of that ginger. I already know what's going to end up happening with it. This is good. I get, get to have my cake and eat it too. I've got the tropical flowers with lots of color, the Tradescantia in the front. This is going to fill out and just be absolutely beautiful this year. I cannot wait to see some growth on those. Now the next thing I need to handle over here. I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the garden tour you like the shadow from the umbrella? Have to have it on the camera or else this thing just overheats non-stop like every couple of minutes. There are a clump of uh, roots in here of corms. At least there were. Where'd they go? Uh, well I was going to pick up these. Oh no they have some growth on them. Okay. I had mentioned in the garden tour that there were some old ginger corms in here from a uh, curcuma that was planted in this container last year but it didn't make sense to leave those right here they just come up in between the spot and it would look weird if i had some to put over here then that would be different but i don't and i have another spot underneath the queen palm where i think that these would look nicer so i'm gonna come in here i think i've got all of them is that all of them i think it is okay, and then i'm thinking like right here is that can you see that i can't see my screen it's too dang sunny i don't even know is the things in focus i hope so doesn't really matter there's not a lot to it i'm just going to loosen up the soil here best as i can there are a lot of roots in this spot and i don't want to go tearing into them too terribly much and then any of these gingers that have some growth on them might be able to see that maybe come on camera you have autofocus do it there we go you can see how there's some life on the bottom of this corm here. So, or that's really the top of the corm. Peel off the dead mushy stuff like so and just plop these down in there. If you're ever in doubt about what direction to plant something, then just plant it on its side and don't plant it very deep and correct it when it starts to come up. Checking them out, making sure there's nothing too rotten or mushy inside of there because that'll just cause problems. Cover those back up and that's done. Now, this container, Needs a trailer. This shadow, oh, that shadow is going to drive me crazy. This is probably going to look awkward for the first several weeks, but I think, oh, 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 I think when it's done, when the plants that I'm going to use here start to come to life and fill in, it will look a lot nicer. I have a vision in my head and hopefully be able to make that come across on camera. I have three different verbenas here. I love verbena. I don't 
feel like I plant them anywhere near as often as I should out here. And there are a variety of reasons for that, typically just because sometimes it gets really hot and wet during the summer and then they have a tendency to melt away. This container, it's elevated. The moisture that I'm going to be giving, it's gonna be more controlled through drip. And I wanted something different that's not a petunia, even though I know there's already petunias in these containers. I just wanted something different. How am I going to squeeze all three of these into this container? I don't know, but we're gonna make it happen. Oh, this right here, Superbina pink shades. And then this one over here is a Superbina peachy king, which I love. I love the shade of orange on that one. And then this one right here is Imperial Blue which is purple, but you know how gardening is. We'll call it blue, I guess. These are going to have to be planted like right next to each other in order for their colors to run together the way that I would like them to. So I might have to scoot the banana back, which is not the end of the world. It's okay, the banana's only been in there four weeks, so as long as I don't disturb that root ball all that much, then I think that it should be fine. I know that I want the pink in the middle just because there's pink on these petunias on the outside so that will get lost right next to it so I want something that contrasts on the edges not that it really matters ideally these will all be growing together and it will just look like a fun little symphony of various colored verbena in one spot I think I'll go ahead and scoot this petunia down Let me just move it down a little ways so that there's some more room here in the middle because the superbenas do get to be a hefty size. That's what I'm told. They always end up rotting on me. Oh, does the peachy king contrast more or complement? Yeah, it's fine. Wrap that right in there and now just have to make room. This is the tricky part. I'm going to have to make room for the pink one here in the middle without disturbing this banana too much. It's probably going to take me a minute to pull that off. It's a nice big scoop pulling that banana up so I don't think it will have caused any problems there but who knows slowly excavate with my fingernails over here to make a new spot to drop the banana in that's nice and big so that I'm not having to worry about having done any damage to the roots there we go look I know it's gonna take time just got to give it a minute eventually these will all be overlapping and this will be the color scheme. Come back, come back over here. I'm trying to show off how nice you're going to look together. Just fun tones that will go together. Pollinators, love Oh, I could have zoomed in. That would have been, let's try this again. Thought I was already zoomed in. You get it. They're going to overlap each other. There'll be a whole bunch of different color in the front. Pollinators love verbena. I love verbena. So just be given that a shot this year in addition to the turbo keeps running underneath the tripod. That's why it keeps moving around like that. Don't know why. As soon as I pick up the tripod, he feels like he has to run around underneath it seems to be a compulsion of his I, maybe he likes the way the feet of the tripod feel on his back there's gonna be a lot of color right here which is what i was going for for the sake of continuity i'm gonna do the same thing right here so i'm gonna do that and show you what it looks like when i'm done Ooh, you know what this might be a bad idea i might be doing the wrong thing here these containers i put alyssum in them last year and they got pretty stringy because there wasn't quite enough sun for them. Sometimes I put the Supertunia Vistas in there just because even without the proper sun, they still grow fairly nicely in flower. Verbena, there's no way that that's going to be as forgiving as the uh, Alyssa the Snow Princess, which is just a very vigorous grower, pretty much no matter what you do with it. And as forgiving as a Vista Supertunia, Supertunia Vista. This might be a bad idea but I really want them here. I don't think it's going to work. This would have been a great spot for some of those Tradescantia Nanooks, but I just put those in the ground, so that's not an option. Don't need to think about things that I can't do. But maybe, okay, here's what, here's what I might do. I think maybe I'll go ahead and plant them in here, and then if they start to get luggy and gross looking, just lift them out, move them to a different container. The Eureka Palm container over there by the hot tub, I think that would be a great spot for some verbena. It'd be hard to dig the holes in there because there's not a lot of room around the perimeter of the plant but if I could do that that would look really nice in there I just hmm yeah, I'm gonna think about it for a minute yeah I'm just gonna do it I had an extra serving of it today and I'm just gonna do it if it doesn't work no big deal can just pull them out and put them somewhere else and drop something different in here this is gonna be challenging though how am I gonna I don't hmm what am I gonna do here give that a gentle lift and see if I have any 
wiggle room to plant this any further back. I doubt it. It's mostly roots back here. But if I could scoot it back just a little bit, then that would make a big difference. I'm also noticing that the soil down in here in between those roots is getting kind of muddy, which means it's probably time to repot this thing. Okay. All right. Yeah, that gave me a little bit of room to work with behind everything. See if that's enough room though to get one of these verbenas in. I don't, ooh, that's gonna be a tight fit. That's gonna be a really tight fit, but I think I can make it happen if I put them together and put them down at the same time into the container. Yeah, that's good. Wasn't too much compression there on the roots, didn't have to tear at them very much, which is ideal because I don't like pulling on the roots of verbena. I also just realized I didn't even look to see if y'all could see what I'm doing. Can you? When the lighting's like this, you can't even tell when things are in and out of focus. Dig down and drop in the last one. That's this peachy king. I also have, where are they? Well, before I even start talking about that, let me see if I can dig out a hole appropriate for the other plants that I was thinking about cramming in here, because it might be too tight of a fit. Gonna try and make it work. Colocasia, tropical storm. I have some extras because I was going to be planting them around the pool and then, well, you know, all this stuff. I feel like I've explained this so many times. I had different plants delivered than what I was anticipating planting around. So changing things up, I can put one on each side here. I was concerned when I thought about putting them in here. I guess I hadn't really talked about that, but like a week ago, I, when the palm trees got delivered, I thought about putting them in here, but my concern was that they might get choked out. But the ones that I planted in the hydrangea planters down, you know, on the other side of the pool, those are coming up nice and strong through the sun impatience. So I would think that this should be all right. Yeah, I like how this looks. Lighting's kind of harsh, but hopefully you get the idea. Got the verbena in the front, a couple of these colocasias on each side, which really, those aren't gonna be much of anything to look at for a few weeks. And I also popped a dragon wing begonia in the uh, back here. You can see me pouring the water on it right now. I hadn't put any pink dragon wings out here this year, which is surprising, because I usually plant a bunch of those. They're one of my favorite annuals. I like them a lot. Get that leaf out of here, that's in the way. I don't think I could fit any more in this container <laughs> at this point. So it'll be two of the tropical storm colocasias, one here, one over here that will come up and above everything, and then the dragon wing begonia is going to do the same. That's going to come up and have a bit of an arching habit to it with those fun pendulous pink flowers on them. I think that this is going to look nice. Just, you know, have to pay close attention to it, make sure that I'm watching the growth on the verbenix. You can see it's even fairly shaded right now, and it's only like 12.30 at this point that's why it quieted down i think that the construction people up the hill went to lunch but i'd seize the opportunity to get as much filming done while they're away of course some watering because that's all i'm doing out here hoping to get the drip set up out here next week because this is just getting ridiculous maybe some rain rain would be good it's been a very dry year i know i keep talking about that probably a broken record okay so that's everything for the palm tree plantings, those are officially done. Got the Adenidia handled, lots of colorful stuff going on in that container. Same thing with the queen, need to water that one in. Fresh tropical looking garden bed over there. Now, what I've been waiting for, what I've been very excited about doing, I'm gonna plant up these pool pots. I'm gonna wait till this afternoon for the sun to get over behind these trees so that everybody can actually see what I'm doing and so that I'm not cooking while I'm out here doing it. Oh, there she is, good morning. Good morning, Pumpkin. Good morning, I mean, afternoon. I just woke up. You had a nice nap, Pumpkin. Okay, don't want to disturb you too much, not while you're watching the Nature Channel. Turbers, Turber, <laughs> Turbo. I'm ready to go back outside, look at the view. Forget the window, I clean all the time. I got dogs. They're always getting stuff on the windows. Doesn't that look nice? That's what I want, so walk outside and see the things, like as you come through and just have like the flowers and the palm fronds and the trunk from the Adenidia. Looks good from here too. Yeah, dirty. That's not from the dogs, that's from the sprinklers. I need to do something with that hanging basket. And Turbo, I got a new toy for you on the front porch. You wanna go get your new toy? You wanna go outside and play with your new toy? Yes? I'm not seeing much enthusiasm from you. Do you, do you not, you wanna be left alone? 
What's the deal? Toby, how about you? Toby. Toby. Okay, he's fine. He blinked. He's okay. A quick hello from Cosmo. By hello, I mean I'll bite the lens. Oh, you're not gonna bite the lens today? You're just gonna go for my fingers and give everybody a kiss? Okay, yeah, you good boy. You pretty bird. Right, let's go plant some stuff up and give Turbo his new toy. You wanna go play with your new toy? You wanna go outdoors? Come on, Turbo. Come on. Yeah. Plant up some palm tree pots. Let Turbo play with his new toy. Holy crap, it got hot out here. Really took you just down again, huh? You've done everything you can do today, apparently. Those are pretty wilted. I need to run the sprinklers over there. I'm thinking that that would be a good idea. But now, I'm gonna start working on these. Oh, okay. Well, there's the problem. Sprinkler heads buried. That's supposed to be rising up some more. I tried messing with it. That's not coming up any further. Good thing I didn't take all the time to clean this up because I'm gonna have to dig out this whole spot and put in a new head, which is pretty easy to do. Not a big deal. It does mean I'm going to have to hand water down here, like right now. I have to do it right now. Those are some very, very thirsty impatience. I watered all these in after I planted them. I watered them in very, very heavily. And you can see this is why I wanted to get the digging up and moving done before the sun was over here. Assuming I didn't disturb too much of the root ball, this is how they look. Imagine if I had really had to tear at these and hack at them to get them to come up and out. That would have been bad. And yeah, it is better when they're this thirsty to try and aim for the roots. It's like I'm gonna be giving this one another water too. Okay, well as soon as I'm done with this, then get started on those planters. This very second I sit down to film, giant queen palm goes tumbling. Not all that surprised by that because the palm tree was leaning. It has a curve in the trunk, which looks cool, but not great for potted plants. So I'm gonna, I need to figure something out with that one. I can't just leave it. I can't, I can leave it there for right now. I'm doing something else right now. Something I'm much more excited about. Look at all the goodies I have for these containers. Lots of fun stuff in here. I put these palms, the Gossia palms, in these containers a good inch to maybe even inch and a half lower than I normally would. I did that for a few reasons. The main reason is because well, I guess I should probably go into what I want to do with these. I talked about it a lot in the last few bit videos, blah, blah, videos, but that's fine. We can go over it again. I want to just have these more simple than the planters on the other end. That's why I have an entire flat of plants in front of me to shove into the container. Nothing big and bushy and full that's going to hide these awesome trunks that these palm trees have. And I'm gonna backfill, or not backfill, top dress it with a good amount of sand, throw some shells in there, and just have them kind of look like throwing little islands. And I figured what better to do that with something that's colorful and isn't going to take away too much from the containers, isn't very demanding, vinca. Particularly the Cascade vincas or trailing vincas. I picked up a six pack of the Mediterranean XP strawberry trailing vinca which are very pretty. And I think these will be a lot easier to get into these containers because there's not a lot of room here to plant at all. It's mostly roots and then the edge of a container. So getting these big core cascades in here, that's gonna be a big challenge. Not even close to the kind of challenge it's gonna to be to get the rest of these plants in here, but I think you can make it happen, probably. I will probably have to do some tearing at the roots, which is not ideal with the vinca. They're pretty forgiving, but this is a harsh, spot to have plants in. It is very, very, very hot. Surrounded by pavement, there's a lot of bright light that reflects up here, but it's just, it's the way it is. It's gonna have to work and I have to figure out how to, how to dig a hole for that size of a plant inside a pot that's got a lot of roots in it. Okay. Actually, surprisingly, not a big deal. This is loosening up quite nicely. So at least the one that's going in this spot might go in fairly easily, despite a couple of roots that are in the way otherwise i think that will go in yeah that works not perfect but just gonna have to make do right and here's the tag if anybody was wondering maybe the camera will focus on it so you can see what i'm talking about camera focus cora cascade xdr f1 strawberry i actually think i could probably dig that out a little bit more may as well give this plant all the space that it can get down in here i'm not one to admit defeat before even getting going on something, but I really, really doubt I'm gonna be able to get everything in this container that I want to. So that's that, the Cora Cascade. I have three, so one here, there's going to be another one in the back over here, and then another right here. So a little triangle of those. I'm gonna pluck these in, pop them into place, 
when I'm done with the bigger plants because I'm going to need to displace some soil to get the bigger plants that are going in the middle taken care of. And I figure that way I can gauge better how much backfill there is. I don't want there to be too much soil up here. So when I top dress this with sand, that'll all end up, you know, washing up and mixing together. It'll probably happen regardless, right? I'm sure I'll have to add more sand into the mixers. Had a bug fly in my eyeball. Roia, Roia discolor. Beautiful variegation on these. This is a risky move because this is gonna be a lot of sun right here. Might end up being too much for them. Oh, maybe not though. Sometimes when you get plants up on drip, they can take a lot more sun than you would otherwise think. But I just thought like having a roia, like I want this to look fairly wild, like a little chunk of the ocean. Having that right there, and then maybe if I can get one of these tattoo orange vink, eh, no, probably not that. Then on the inside, I have the mini vinca. That's what I call them, the soiree uh, kawaii coral reef from Suntory. Uh, Cathanthorus. Cathatharin. I bet have them calling them Cathanthorus. That's not what they are. That's basically a mini vinca. It's a very lush plant. They're very, very, very easy to grow. They do like things more on the hot and dry side. It shouldn't be too much of a problem considering that the soil over here is very sandy. And I planted those around some cordelins last year and uh, they got a good amount of moisture and they were totally fine. So I'm thinking that that should be the same situation here. Hopefully they'll do even better because this is a much more sandy mix that's going to drain really well. Look at that. I'm already loving this. Turbo, what are you doing? Leave it alone. Leave it alone. His frog friend is in the skimmer right now. He's right in that pool with the bullfrog. They appear to be buds. I'm sure they're not. The frog doesn't seem to mind him at all and he doesn't go after the frog. I watch him closely. I think you're just over there looking for his friend. That's what I'm guessing. What's happening there? Okay, now I do need to make a decision here. I really want this vinca in here. I feel like it's kind of an odd thing to go vinca, 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 vinca. And I only have one of these. I just don't know why. I always buy everything in twos, but not this time. Just got the one. But I love the color. Not crazy about the dark center that's on them, but that color on the flower, it's just beautiful. I'm gonna try and squeeze it in there. And that, it seems to be a really vigorous Nice vinca. Like, look at how full and bushy this is. This has done a good amount of growing since I bought it just a week ago. Won't know unless we try, right? I'm gonna try and get this vinca in here. And I'll just keep my eyes peeled over the next several weeks to see if I can find another one, even though I don't really need to be going to the nurseries for much these days. I'm pretty well stocked with things that I need to plant at this point. It's an excuse to go to the nurseries and check out the plants, especially since the selection is gonna start being mixed up over the next few weeks. I love that. I'm really glad I put that in there. It's going to make it difficult to get the rest of the plants in here, but it's beautiful. Starting to work on a hole for one of the catharanthus, and there's there's some really big roots there. I don't think that that's going to happen. Not very easily anyways. Okay, are you ready? You ready to see it? You heard the background noise from the previous clip, right? So you know why I had to cut the camera off. That, I think, is nice to leave an element of surprise at the end. Look at it, look at it, isn't it just perfect? I love when you had something planned out in your head and it actually comes out how you wanted it to. This is pretty much exactly what I was hoping for. The roeas in the middle, nice contrast and texture with those tattoo orange catharanthus. Tossed in a little broken coconut shell some seashells into both of these. Managed to get in three of the Cora Cascade Vinca Catharanthus. Did them in a triangle, which I'm pretty sure I talked about. And then I tucked in those other Catharanthus, the soirees, into these containers as well as a backdrop because these will grow up and higher than everything else. Have one in with this reddish pink hue to it. And then two others that are this beautiful blue color. Let's see, what was the name on that one? Held on to the tag so I could tell you, I can't remember if I already talked about this. Blueberry Kiss. Kawaii Blueberry Kiss. I love how those look. They're dainty little flowers and their foliage. Everything in here has pretty low watering needs. The Catharanthus and the Roia. And to my understanding, the Gossia palms, but I can't say for sure. Haven't grown them personally. That's just what I've read about them. I would imagine being in a container surrounded by pavement 
with all the reflecting sunlight and all those other things that I talked about earlier will probably influence the amount of water everything needs in here. Wouldn't be a problem. It's a nice, well-drained mix, but it's not overly drained. I talked about in the garden tour about how sometimes I overdo it with the drainage and cause some problems as far as getting things hydrated. So I made sure to not do that this time. The nursery, when I went, they only had two of the pinkish red catharanthus and they had four of the blueberry ones. So I grabbed the everything. I got, I bought them all. I think that hint of bluish purple with all the different pinks and that fun apricot orange on that catharanthus in the back, I think that that goes well together. And this is totally different from anything I've ever done in these containers before. Very simple and it's just nice. Uh, there's something refreshing about it. That I like the simplicity, even though it's not that simple. But there's a lot going on here with the shells and the sand and everything, but it's conveying the energy. I'm getting the vibe from these that I was hoping to get, which is just beach. Beachy, summer vibes. It's clean, not too much going on, so there's not a lot of chaos in the containers. And remember, I only had one of those tattoo oranges, so this one didn't get one. That is, it's... It, gonna bother me to bother me a lot so i'll be keeping my eyes out for another one because you gotta admit between the two i mean that that pop of color even from this far away there's such a nice pop of color from that tattoo orange in the middle i had thought about maybe doing the, some of those tiny little hibiscus in the middle instead of the uh, tattoo orange vinca but the problem with those little hibiscus is they don't really bloom a lot. You know, hibiscus, they tend to bloom on new growth. And this, those little ones that come in those little pots, I just figured that, I don't know, I'd never get much out of those. So it seemed like it'd be a waste. And these containers aren't symmetrical, regardless. That was one of the reasons I went with doing things in this style. The palm trees on this side don't really look like the ones on this side. Similar, but not the same. So it didn't seem necessary to me to be really strict about making sure that they're identical. They have the same vibe going on the sand, the roia, some seashells, theranthus and coconuts, all that, all the same things, just different because, well, it had to be different. It had to be very different because again, they just aren't the same. There's a different layout inside the container. So I had to play around with that and have fun with it. And I actually did, I had a lot of fun planting these up. It was very relaxing. I think it helped being able to top dress it with the sand and throwing some shells in there and just playing around with it. That was nice. So the stuff that I didn't get to film because all the background noise. After I had these back filled with soil and had everything in them, I watered them in heavily with a good amount of water pressure because I wanted to make sure that all the soil was displaced and burped, right? You know, when you plant something new, you water it and sometimes you get some bubblage and some soil goes running and moving. So I did that, added some more soil and then repeated. Repeated until it stopped doing that, until there was a nice solid layer of soil and then I went in and top dressed with the sand. I did that because otherwise the sand would end up just washing away into one of those areas where the soil burps up. Just made sense to do it that way. I'm sure over time I will have to add more sand or the sand will start to get dirty. It's already got some flecks of dirt in there, which is fine. That's going to happen. I'll have to scoop some out and put some new stuff in there and top dress it, keep it looking nice. I'm good with that. I think that that'll be fun to do. Nice, fun, beachy, and simple planters, fairly low maintenance planters. I think that this just looks freaking spectacular. I absolutely love how this came out. I think it looks so good. The roeas, that's something I should, okay, we'll, we'll talk about it. Oyster plants, roeas, in the ground, in certain situations, the closer to the coast you are, the more sun they can take. They could potentially fry in these. It's a possibility. We'll just have to wait and see. If that happens, I'll replace them probably with a sun-loving bromeliad to go in their place, like maybe one of the fireballs, something of the sort, or a tradescantia of something like that. But more, uh, eh, no, no, probably not a tradescantia. There are lots of other options, is all I'm saying. But this is the direction I wanted to go because it just, well, you gotta admit, it looks perfect. This looks like a bunch of fun little, whatever stereotype you would think of for tropical like Polynesian planters just went blech, right into the planter. Oh, it's so good. Good to have that done. I wasn't actually looking forward to planting these up. I was looking forward to getting it done, but actually planting them up, not so much. Just because these containers, it takes a really long time to backfill them because there's a gap about, I don't know, maybe this big, maybe an inch around the pot that's on the inside. So remember these Gossia palms, they're in a 15 gallon pot sitting inside of these containers. So you have to slowly 
backfill that. So I don't have to slowly do it, but in order to keep the soil from going all over the place, that's generally the best way to do it. So you have to pile dirt in the middle and slowly work it down from the top of the container all the way down to about right around here. There's gravel about a third of the way down to help weigh the containers down. But they don't get blown around during storms and, you know, knocked around. It just takes a really long time. So that, it probably took about 45 minutes to an hour just to get that done. But after that, smooth sailing. They weren't too bad to plant up. I was really thinking, as I mentioned, that it was going to be more difficult than it actually was just because of the amount of roots that were there. But those roots were really soft. I was able to dig in and scoot them out of the way and plant things in between. And that was partially what made it take just a little bit longer. And maybe what made it more relaxing was that I didn't, not that nothing about this looks natural, right? Of course not. But in my mind, I wanted it to look like the plants had just sort of landed there and started growing as they would on a beach. Now you wouldn't find these growing together on a beach. You would have this perfect little postcard situation just naturally happening. I just didn't want it to look too intentional. So some of the spots where I tucked the plants in there took longer to dig out. Like some of those catharanthus are right in between some of those trunks. Took a minute to get those in there, but I think in the long run, I'll be happy that I got them placed where I did. Overall, great day. Got a lot of stuff done, lots of stuff that needed to get done. All the fun stuff over here, that's all fixed up now and done. Other than that sprinkler head, that area is done. Got some more trays scanty in the garden. I don't think I talked to y'all about that, but I popped some nanooks down there in the other end and all those verbena. Can't wait to see what those do. This is where I'm gonna call it though. I have a lot of other things I need to get on top of. There may not be a video on Wednesday. I'm gonna do my best, there probably will be, but what I'm working on for next weekend's vlog is going to be extremely time consuming. It's not gonna make for a very long video, but it's probably gonna take me a good part of the week to get the project done. So if there's, I'm just letting you know, everything's fine. People always ask if I miss a day, if I miss a Wednesday or Saturday, if everything's, up, everything's fine. Well, hopefully that's the future. I think everything's fine. I don't know. Odds are that will be the reason because I'm working on stuff on the other end of the garden, getting that stuff ready. But this is, okay, I had so much fun. What a nice day. Just getting to plant things and enjoy the weather. I heard thunder. It, it, nothing happened, but it was so good to hear it. I picked the palm tree up, by the way. I didn't just leave that on the ground. It's up there now. Yeah, it was nice. Oh, and I have some tiny little beach balls coming that I can drop into the container. You gotta make it gaudy, right? Have to. You can't just leave it nice and classy. You gotta throw something in there to make it look ridiculous. I couldn't resist. Amazon suggested it to me and they know me very well. So now I have a box of 24 four inch stress balls coming in the mail that look like beach balls. Those will be going in here. I was going to just order some four inch inflatable beach balls and wrap them around styrofoam, like the styrofoam spheres you can get from the craft store. But then I saw the other ones and I was like, yeah, I'd rather do that. I don't feel like being crafty. I just, just give me some balls. Stress balls are fun. The dogs will play with them. People can take them and I can put new ones in there. I have some torch lights, some little LED torch lights. I'm rambling at this point. I'm almost done, I promise. This kind of look like a cylinder, but when you turn them on, they look like fire. That would be fun to stick in the middle of these trunks at nighttime and see it glow. That could be nice too. Thought about solar lights, but they're just too big and bulky. I don't want those in the containers. And then the last thing, okay, it's gonna be quick. The reason I only wanted three trailers is one, because I wanna see the sides of the pot and also because everything has to have its own individual drip. I can't just have drip heads running all over this thing. I have to bury them under the sand or else it's gonna look kind of weird. And if I have trailers all over the whole thing, it's gonna make it more difficult to get those drip lines buried. Okay, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Turbo's toy didn't come. Something else is in the mail. That's why he's inside and outside playing with his toy. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Getting some fun summer stuff going. That's finally starting to feel like summer, hopefully for most people. All right. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on gr I forgot to tell you guys how big these get. 24 to 30 inches, 20 to 30 inches. That's the Coria Cascade. This is just the regular Mediterranean strawberry. That's how big the trailers are on those. Six to 10 inches, six to 10 inches. That's about it, but they'll spread some more. Bye bye.